Hi, welcome back, and happy Teacher's Day. Uh, this is not something that one of my students bought me. Uh, this is something I came across in a, uh, basically a dollar store uh, today, and it caught my attention because it's a nice picture frame with a fairly deep footprint. And the first thing I thought was, if I got rid of that horrible reflective bottom part of it, if I got rid of the glass, and if I got rid of those strange purple uh, half beads, that would make a great diorama base. There we go. Now look, that's what I was talking about. That's a nice deep um, diorama base. Why do I want it to be quite deep? Well, for a while now I've wanted to make a diorama for this nice uh, shrimp wagon that I have, and I want to have this going in some water. And if I can find a frame which is fairly deep, I won't have to mess around with the masking um, of the edges when I put the water in, um, or building up the edges myself. So basically, I'm just being a little bit lazy. So I think this would look quite nice in here. So the idea is, I want to have basically this vehicle just going into some kind of river. So the river will probably come down here somewhere. And then, here on the left hand side, I want a sort of raised area where there'll be a tree. And then, uh, it's not going to have been on a road, but a sort of muddy dirt track. And basically it's going to be late autumn, early winter, uh, somewhere on the eastern front. So Sculptor Mold is going to be my main um, tool for, for farming the terrain, but because I want some fairly high sections, I'm just going to use some um, offcuts of this blue um, um, XPS foam. And that's just to build it up. The uh, Sculptor Mold will go over the top of that, and that's just basically to save weight by not having a, a massive blob of school, Sculptor Mold inside the frame. So that's roughly what it's going to look like. Higher on the driver's left, um, slightly lower on the right, and then in between um, a sort of sunken dirt road alleyway going into the river. And the figures I'm going to use with the kit are these from Tamiya. It's a nice kit. I will probably use three figures. I'll definitely use the driver and I'll use the, um, the field commander. I'm probably not going to use this guy here, the tank commander and I will probably use the um, Panzer Grenadier as well. Okay, I'm back on the top side. I've just mixed up some Sculptor Mold and I'm going to whack this in. This is only going to be a very thin initial layer. And basically the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want any of the base wood showing. The lowest point is going to be on the right hand side, which is going to be the deepest part of the river. And then of course, obviously the river gets higher and shallower towards its edge, and then of course the ground is above the river again. So just by putting this base layer on, I'm establishing what the lowest point can be, and I'll build up on that uh, shortly. So just making the sculpture mold fairly wet, sometimes you need to dip your fingers in a bowl of water just to smooth it out, making sure it's going right to the edge. At this point I'm really not fussed if it gets on the frame because it will wipe off easily enough, as long as it doesn't dry. Okay, I've got some pretty good coverage there. Straight away now I'm going to put these pieces of XPS foam in basically because it's quite hard to actually glue the foam to things so I may as well take advantage now of the fact that I can embed them in the uh, sculptor mould. Okay so this is a few hours later and the sculptor mould has basically dried. It was a very thin layer so I've mixed up some more and now I'm going to add the actual um, terrain layer if you will over the top most of this, well it's all going to be painted then, most of it will be coated with a mud product anyway, so this is really just about the shape and I need to make sure it goes right down in these corners right against the frame. So this road area needs to be built up quite a bit because it obviously needs to be higher than the, um, the river bank and the river bank itself needs to be higher than the river so I need to put quite a lot of sculpture mold in here just to raise the height I'm not putting tire tracks in here right now because um, there'll be some mud product on the top and I'll put the tire tracks directly into that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to make a tree and I'm using the wire armature technique to do this. 
So I'm making a bunch of wires and I'm wrapping one wire around the rest to keep them together. And then at one end of that bunch, I'm bending the wires into loops, which will form the roots of the tree and will also help anchor it to the diorama base. And then at the other end, I'm splitting bunches of wires off. And I'm twisting one wire around to keep them together. And then I'm basically repeating the process. I'm splitting the bunches of wires up into smaller bunches. I'm twisting them together to keep them together and just twisting and splitting, twisting and splitting. For a few of the thin branches at the ends, I'm taking single short pieces of wire and just wrapping them around and then just clamping them down with a pair of pliers. And this is roughly where the tree is going to go on the diorama. So the product I'm using here is AK Interactive Acrylic Textured Earth. I'm trying to get as much coverage as I can here. This will probably need several coats. I'll need to put one coat on, wait for it to dry, and that will give something for the second coat to stick to. And the goal is basically to cover all of the pieces of wire. Here I'm painting the riverbed with a series of artist acrylic paints. I'm trying to graduate the colours from much lighter on the riverbank down to darker, almost black, on the deepest part of the river to give an illusion of depth. I'm just trying to blend that transition in to keep it smooth. And here is the dried tree. I painted it brown and I'm dry brushing some grey on it now. Trees tend to be more grey than brown. And this is where the tree is going to go. So I'm using some more sculptor mould and a little bit of super glue under the tree as well actually to hold it in place. Vallejo Acrylic Mud is the product I'm going to use for the road. This is European Earth. And then to break up the uniformity, I'm using some thick Russian mud, also from Vallejo, just to mix in. Especially in the road area which has been churned up by vehicles. And I've sprinkled some dry leaves in here. I made these using a little leaf cutter, so these are actual uh, dead leaves. There's no point paying lots of money for laser cut paper leaves, I don't think. And now it's time to put some tire tracks in there from the vehicle. 
The vehicle still isn't weathered yet, but it will be later. And then I'm just using some grass tufts to fill out the area around the tree and the bank on the left hand side of the vehicle. I really want a late autumn feel, so I'm sprinkling lots and lots of leaves into the road. And at this point I decided that the riverbed was a little bit plain, just being painted. So I decided to add three different levels of stones from the car stones and these medium stones. A few more leaves mixed in as well that have sunk to the bottom of the river and then some tiny stones as well. And I'm soaking all of this in Woodland Scenics Scenic Cement which will adhere it very, very well and it will also dry matte as well. And then because the stones are their uniform colour, I'm using some Artist acrylic paints watered down, basically just to give them a wash. And these are the same colours I used for the riverbed, burnt umber, burnt sienna and raw umber. And then as a final touch I'm sprinkling some Woodland Scenics fine turf just to represent some moss and so on on the, ri on the river bed. Okay then it was time to weather the vehicle so I used some Tamiya black panel liner. And because the vehicle's painted in XF60 dark yellow, I painted the chips using XF57 buff to represent a lighter version of that yellow. And then on the inside of some of the chips, I used XF69 NATO black to represent deeper chips. For the main weathering of the vehicle I use a mix of AK Odorless Thinner and pigments. The first pigment I used was Cursed Girth and I basically went all over the wheels, all over the bottom of the vehicle, the sides of the vehicle with this mixture.
and here you can see the dried mixture of pigments and I'm going over it now in a slightly whiter pigment also mixed with thinner. And then some simple splattering effects. Finally, I used a little bit more of the Vallejo Earth on the wheels, basically just to secure the vehicle to the diorama. I mixed up my two-part resin and after a test pour, I slowly poured it onto the riverbed. And this is what happened. It went absolutely, totally and completely wrong. Um, I, never, I don't know exactly what happened here. I've never had resin go quite this wrong before. Um, it looks like it was some kind of runaway heat reaction that somehow the heat couldn't escape and that heat took the rest of the resin and that made the reaction go quicker and that generated more heat. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, the resin wasn't that deep and there's quite a large surface area. In my test pour I, I poured it just as deep um, and I also had a smaller surface area and it didn't do this. Uh, you can see the resins also expanded and leaked all the way back up the road as well, which is not what I wanted. So I need to take some action to fix this, but I do have a plan. So the first step to fix this was to just cover up the road where the resin had expanded with some more Vallejo textured earth, sprinkle some leaves back on top. That's essentially where we were at the beginning, so that's not such a problem. The bigger problem is with the resin itself. Um, I obviously can't sand it, uh, it's, it's just not going to work sanding. So in the end I decided that I'm going to lose all that detail underneath the water and I just painted over it in XF52 flat earth, just really to represent a, a dirty river, a fast flowing dirty river. And there are a few holes here in the resin, I'm just filling those with Vallejo plastic putty and of course repainting them afterwards once it's dried. So that doesn't look too bad, it certainly looks better than when I poured the resin. So I used some Artists acrylic gel, gloss, and just stippled it on over the surface to represent some waves. And then I used an airbrush to push it into shape. All of this will dry clear. And you can see here, this is what it looks like when it's dry. It's got a nice glossy surface and it looks a little bit more like water. It's not quite there yet, but it looks a bit more like it. So then the next thing I did was I used a bit more of the gloss acrylic gel just in certain places to represent the, the waves that have come off as the vehicle has gone into the water, bow waves essentially.
and here you can see the waves I added. I'm just waiting for the gel to dry now. And I think that looks fairly good. It looks a lot better than it did when it had the resin in it, which is uh, the main thing. And then finally, just to make the water look a little bit better, I'm just dry brushing on some of the highest peaks, a little bit of white, just to give the, a little break of a, a small wave. And the final step was to paint the uniforms and I wanted to paint them in the uh, P-Dot pattern using these three colours here from this Vallejo set. So it's a base colour of SS Brown. And then blocking in sections in orange. Then adding dots in black and orange. and then finally going over some of the orange and black sections with some of the original brown colour. Okay, and here is the final result. I'm a little bit sad that I lost all of this detail under the water, but to be honest, given how bad the resin looked after it had cured, I would consider this to be quite a successful recovery because I was pretty close to throwing the whole thing away at one point, so I don't think it looks too bad. Not the best diorama ever, but I'm not too unhappy with it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.